start looking at the advancements in, in both pharmacy, pharmacological innovation, as well as medical, right? right? Just stem cell research, all the things that are going on. If we could treat the whole You're listening to Beyond the Claim, the show for forward-thinking risk and claims professionals curious about the latest industry trends, winning strategies, and stories from influential leaders. Let's dive in. Welcome to this episode of Beyond the Claim. I'm your host, Mark Cunningham, Chief Sales and Marketing Officer for Broadspire. Today, I have with me the Chief Client Officer for My Matrix, Paul King. Nice to meet you. Oh, nice to see you, I should say, Paul. I know you very well at this point. <laughs> hey, Mark, good to be here. Good to see you in uh, you saying, sunny but cold San Diego. I know you're just flying in, but uh, I'm from Boston. This is sunny and hot. Oh, you're kidding me. It's like, <laughs> what, for those of you, uh, so we're at the uh, RIMS 2024 conference. It's sunny, but it is about 50 to 60 degrees outside. So uh, it is good weather, but it's a little chilly for myself, Floridian blood. But um, <laughs> Paul, thank you. I know you're a busy man. I know you have a full calendar. Appreciate you joining us today. Um, before we jump in, I'd love to hear about, I think our audience would love to hear some about your background, kind of how you got into this space. Maybe even along the way, what advice you'd give to the uh, the 20 year old Paul graduated from college as he uh, <laughs> went on this journey. But um, but again, thanks for joining us. So. Thanks, Mark. I appreciate it. Um, it's an interesting start. I think I will start with what I would tell my 20 year old self, which is, there's a pretty cool industry out there in the insurance space that touches every business. No, there's no business could be in business without insurance. So, you know, this is kind of the lifeblood of the oil of all business. And I think kids at 20, 22 coming out of college don't know that it exists. Yeah. I didn't know it existed. I started as a cost accountant for a energy manufacturing company. They were doing coal and oil fired uh, power plants. So. Okay. My days were numbered there. <laughs> <laughs> but I had some uh, childhood friends, uh, lived across the street from me for years. And uh, one of the women worked at Liberty Mutual. And we were talking over uh, at a cookout one time and she said, hey, you know, we're looking for some new people. Come on in. And I was looking for a new career at that point, uh, late, mid, mid to late 20s. Um, and then signed up with them. I started in the RIMIS uh, program. Mm -hmm. So Risk Management Information Systems which as a 27 year old cost account, well, I, you know, I have computer programming skills, uh, made sense. And what I saw was when you look at all the data that's going through the Remus platform, you see how all the pieces touch, right. Um, the risk transfer, the claim administration, the managed care component. So it really gave me a good education into the, into the space and all facets of it. Um, and then from there, I actually, my career has been two divergent paths at the same time. Okay. So for the last 25 years, uh, I've either been on the claim paying side, so the TPA side like right. ourselves, yep. or on the uh, medical and clinical intervention side. So we you know, manage care in our vernacular. Um, so I, I've spent kind of dual time on both of those tracks. Uh, a lot of them, I was with a company called Intracore, so I was 12 years there. And then following, uh, they were owned by Cigna when Cigna owned property and casualty. Cigna sold that to Ace Insurance, now Chubb Insurance, um, and the TPA arm there was ESIS, and they brought me along with them. So really half my career has been in the Cigna family of companies. Um, enjoyed a couple of different startups along the way, doing clinical intervention, and then found my way back to Cigna, who owns Express Scripts, who owns my matrix. <laughs> so with a pharmacy benefit management, workers' compensation arm of Express Scripts. So you, you started off, um, before the journey saying something you would have told your 20 year old self would it have been to go directly to this path or, or, or to know that it exists and explore it. Yeah. Right. It's this, I think everybody has this issue when they talk about what we do for a living, like, Oh geez, life insurance. No, I already have. Right. It, it is the furthest thing from selling life insurance. Right. right, right. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. So current focus more on the, the PBM side, right? Pharmacy benefits management. Um, what is it and uh, why do we need it? Yeah, so I've been in my matrix for four years now, um, and it's uh, it, having spent a lot of time in uh, managed care realm of things where uh, medical bill review. So this is kind of similar to medical bill review, um, but with, with a kick. So I would say first and foremost, why we need a pharmacy benefit management is uh, to ensure safety and clinical utilization. Mm -hmm. So to make sure you're getting 
the right drugs at the right time to get to the right outcome, and to make sure you're not being prescribed different drugs that would be dangerous if they were taken in combination. The second part of it is, let's make it affordable. Yeah. So I mentioned that Express Scripts owns us. Express Scripts is the largest healthcare PBM. Uh, they manage over two and a half billion pharmacy transactions a year. We get to leverage those contracts and that uh, buying power that they have to get affordable rates, to get access to uh, all the pharmacies in the country okay. uh, at an affordable rate. And um, they are contracted to dispense timely and to dispense safely. So without you there, you truly believe that the system would kind of run on its own. It would, it would be to each, to each his own, how we manage fees. It would be to the buyer beware it, type, of, type of environment. It, it would be expensive yeah. and people would be injured, mm -hmm. right? They, they would take uh, medications that don't interact well and then be adverse effect. How does that part work? How do you, are you involved in actually triggering an indicator to a particular individual or how do you in inject yourselves there in that part of the process? So uh, again, these contracts are all structured around um, dispensing of the medication. And when we're dispensing the medication, we have formularies set up. We have card coded clinical edits in the platform. So say CVS, Walgreens, um, they, they'll send us electronically, hey, Paul King's trying to fill this prescription. And you know, it may hit an edit. If it hits an edit, it's held there at the counter and it's, it's at the point of sale where it then comes back to us. Hey, well, why are we holding this up? We may, be, we may come back to your claim adjusters yeah. and say, hey, this is an affordability issue. It's an expensive drug. And the claim adjuster might say, hey, can we try something else? But we may see an edit that says, hey, you know, it's an antipsychotic. They're on an antipsychotic already and they're trying to fill an opioid. All right. And those two together could have an advert danger on a health. So you're truly focused on that point of sale before it even gets in their hands. This isn't a hundred reach out to you via phone and say, Hey, you should stop taking that. You want to even avoid that getting that. Some phone. stuff gets stopped right at point of sale. Yeah. And then there's the backside where we're going to do a clinical intervention to assure that, that they're getting the right medication, the right dosage. Um, and again, are we doing it affordably? No. Yeah. Okay. So what are your current priorities, either you individually or my matrix or as an industry, what, what are the current priorities? So it, first and foremost, it is safety um, and affordability, those two key components. And then in workers' compensation, it's managing outlier uh, medication dispensing. Okay. So there's, there's a lot of outside, I'm, I'm not going to call loopholes or fraud or anything, but they're, they're at the bounds of what's allowed to be dispensed and at what cost. So physician dispensing is a concern where the physician has it in the cabinet, they're giving it to you. And it, it's usually in topical um, uh, pain, pain cream, right? So think Fengay back in right. the day. Yeah. Well, they'll put a little Cajun pepper in it. Instead of a $10 tube of Fengay, you're going to spend $1,200 for this okay. differential yeah. <laughs> topical <laughs> medication that right. has an NRC right. code that's that's outside the, the norm. So you could fill it at CVS for $10 or you could get it at the physician for 1200. So that, those are the things that we're looking at managing and mitigating. A lot of our effort today goes into legislative compliance and legislative advocacy. Most states now are looking at uh, putting their fingerprint on the PBM industry and what they allow, what they don't allow. And on behalf of all of our clients, Again, being part of the signal organization, we have access to lobbyists, um, folks who will sit in front of the legislative session and ensure that that our voices are heard. So that if they're gonna make a change, let's make it so that it's beneficial to the patient, at the same time, not crippling the opportunity for the payer to have. Well, what's an example? Because you know when many here lobbyists, they think it's not as, as intuitive to be a positive environment. They think that is maybe a degree of corruption with politicians, but to your point, there's also a degree of advocacy. That's really the main, the initial intent behind those organizations. A hundred percent. So and a lot of it right now is, is looking at the topical medication and, and how is that progressing? So it, it how do you go from a, a full dollar tube of pain medication to $1,200? And so a lot of it's education and you know, we'll sit down with the board in New York, which sitting down with the folks in Pennsylvania. Uh, we sat down in Florida, California. We're doing some work with Texas. So they're all looking at how do these outlier medications exist? 
And what, what can we do to mitigate that? So they're actually working pretty well with us on those components. Um, and, and that's, that's a positive and it's a strength of, of where, where we've been and where we're going. Well, speaking of where you're going, I know you're a very passionate guy on this space. When you look out five years from now, where do you ideally see the focus being, the priorities being, what would you like to accomplish within this upcoming five year stretch? What, what I would love is if, if you look at work comp today, it's very fragmented. So you've got your TPA or your insurer doing the claim mitigation piece. Right. Then you've got a bill review company. You've got nurses doing utilization review. You've got durable medical equipment. You've got home health care. So it's, there's a lot of different components and they're all here. They're all around us right now in this, in this um, event. If we, if we could focus on the whole person health. So I, I go back to college. Um, I started my collegiate career as a um, uh, plastics engineer. And I'm in physics, physics 101, college level. And it was, you know, you get this textbook that's this thick and it's all formulas. And, I, you know, we're going into the final, I think it was my first or second semester and I'm panicking. I had the fortune that my father's good friend, my parents were friends with this couple. He was a professor at the college that I was attending. Okay. So I called, hey, Mr. Leonard, Professor Leonard, can I come over? <laughs> Maybe get some advice. So I had the whole, the big physics book. He said, uh, turn it over. On the back of the physics book was um, Newton's uh, three laws of motion. Just three. Yep. He goes, if you know those three formulas, everything else in that book is derivative of using those formulas in different order or doing them in combination with each other. So basically, if you know those three, you could, do, you could pass physics. Right. I get an A on it. Uh, so when I think of what we're doing here, somebody does an event, somebody's injured. If we just got them healthy, all the costs would come down, right? All the medical intervention costs, um, they would come back to work sooner and their quali quality of life would go up. So, so what I would love to see is benefit neutrality so that we could tr treat everything. So think of, again, back to workers' compensation. You've got an injured claimant, Paul King's injured. And... I think uh, I, I brought some stats with me, if you don't mind. 42% <laughs> of uh, claimants are obese. 90% of those have uh, hypertension and or diabetes. So we don't pay nor treat any of that because you hurt your ankle. Right. So if, if we could do that, NCCI will tell you that if somebody is obese, their uh, cost of that claim is six times as expensive. Wow. So... And when we start looking at where we could go and you start looking at the advancements in, in both pharmacy, pharmacological innovation, as well as medical, right? right? Just stem cell research, all the things that are going on. If we could treat the whole person, you have these digital apps out there. So for smaller money, we could treat the uh, obesity. We could treat hypertension, diabetes, and get sick time better result in our work comp space. So... Um, that's where I really see us going. And that's something, you know, Cigna has set up this whole platform of companies called Evernorth, which is okay. focused on cool personnel. Okay. And they're doing it in the healthcare space. I'd love to bring that to work comp. Um, and some of the stats that, that we've just done, a, they just did a study on it. Um, so if digital application services, COPD and asthma, 47% fewer medical events. But they didn't have to go to the inhaler. They didn't go to the emergency room. They didn't have to go see a doctor. Uh, musculoskeletal. Uh, people, again, people doing at-home, virtual, interactive care uh, see a 70% reduction in pain, right, on a scale of 1 to 10. Um, and the aforementioned obesity, 35% weight loss after six weeks. So these are things that if we applied them for short money and work comp would have a huge benefit. So you're saying over the duration of time, if we looked at an individual that went through this holistic care program versus just treating a isolated component. Yes. We see a, a greater propensity towards total health improvement, fewer, lower costs over time, on an individual and aggregate level. I, I think we would all benefit. The whole system would benefit from it. And so would the claimant. Sure. Right. Sure. And I always switch back and forth, claimant, patient. Absolutely. Right? Because there's somebody who, there was an event out of their control, and, you know, 99% of these folks just want to get back to where they were. Yep. So let's get them back to health. Then the productivity, the cost, all of that will get in line. You and I might be out of a job. 
hey, you know what, though? <laughs> I think we'd all be better off for it. So, right, right. Plus, I'm sure you got your stamp somewhere along the way on that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't fire you, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really appreciate your time. Thank you for taking time away from the Joe Rogan podcast to join us today <laughs> on Beyond the Claim. My uh, pleasure, Mark. Thank you. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. Good luck at the conference. Stay busy and, and prosperous year to you and, and the My Matrix team. You've been listening to Beyond the Claim, a podcast for risk and claims leaders. To ensure you never miss an episode, please subscribe to the show in your favorite podcast player. If you use Apple Podcasts, we'd love for you to give us a quick rating for the show. Just tap the number of stars that you think the podcast deserves. Until next time, stay curious and keep innovating.